slope intercept form and use that to graph our line. When we do this, we're going to ignore the second function completely. We're just looking at the top function right here. And we're looking at the negative 4x minus 2. What's your y-intercept for the negative 4x minus 2? Negative 2. That means I'm going to go down 2 and I'm going to put a point. Did you all get that far at least? Yeah. Good. What's your slope there? Negative 4. So that says I do what? And then? Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, over to the right 1. And now, if you're, if you're thinking about this, you're like, wait a second. I know my negative, I know x is supposed to be less than 0. My negatives are what I'm looking for in this case, but my point's off to the right. That's okay. Remember, you're going to be erasing half your line, right? So use that to draw your line. So there's my whole function. How many of you feel okay getting that, that part of it? Good, all right, so we have our whole line here. Now we're gonna erase half of it. Which half do we want? Now remember, we can only have one vertical segment that works for our graph on each side of our, our number that's given. In our case, it's zero again. So either this one's gonna be okay, or this one's gonna be okay, but not both. Only one or the other. Which one is okay? Which one is less than zero as far as the x goes? Is this less than zero? Yes. This one? So this is the side that we're going to erase or keep? What do you think? Keep. We're going to keep that side. How about this side? Is this the side we're going to keep? No, we're going to erase it. No, because it says we want x is less than zero. This x is greater than zero. But we don't want this side. This side's going to be erased. So again, we go to our zero. We follow our directions. We want x's less than or equal to zero. This is less than zero. This is less than zero. This is. That means I'm keeping this vertical segment. This is not less than zero. This is not less than zero. I'm erasing this vertical segment. So nothing on this side of the graph should be there right now. Another question. Should I have a point here or an open circle there? What tells you you're supposed to have a point? Good. So I should have that solid point there. Hey, that's, that's half our graph. Tell me something. Where should the next half of our graph go? Should it go on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? That's why it's so crucial to get down the first function correctly. You have to have this part right. Otherwise, you're going to have your, your graph flip-flopped. That's not going to look right. So the next one is x plus 1. We're going to go plus 1 on the y-axis. That's our y-intercept. We go up 1 over 1 because our slope is positive 1. It says up 1, right 1. Now, I don't have to graph the whole line anymore. Do you see why I don't have to graph the whole line anymore? I already know that this side has a function already. It has part of that piecewise function. I'm just going to be going that way. Why is it an open circle? Because it doesn't have that equal to Good. So I'm going to change that to an open. Can't ever have two points in the same vertical line. So we're, we're done right there at that point. Do you feel okay with this graphing? It might take a while. This is brand new for you. I mean, this is like, whoa. For some of you, like, oh, mm, mm, you don't want to do that. I know that you might not want to do this right now. It's graphing two lines in one and then erasing half of our graphs, right? It seems kind of weird. But graphing piecewise actually happens a lot. Uh, when you get to calculus, hopefully you will get to calculus, uh, you're going to be graphing and looking at a lot of piecewise functions. So you kind of have to know how to manipulate them now. So take some time, go back and watch this video again if you really are just kind of struggling still, you want to see how to do it again. I think I it took 35 minutes to explain these two, two examples here. So go back and look at those uh, until you really have an idea about how to graph these lines. The graphing part shouldn't be a problem. Everybody in here should be able to go up four, I'm sorry, to a one to the four, up three over one. Everyone can do that. Everyone can graph these individually. It's identifying which half of the graph to erase. And how you do that is by looking right here at your directions for your graph. Are, can we move on? Or are we okay with that? All right. Now, the next part that we're going to talk about in section 8.3 is how to manipulate the graphs once we know what they are. If you remember from 8.2, we took a lot of time and we graphed some nonlinear functions. You remember those nonlinear functions? We had basically four shapes.
we have basically we have four basic shapes for graphing. The first graph that we had, and this is back from a long time ago, like math A days, the first graph you see when you're, when you're graphing things are your typical straight lines. This would be the graph f of x equals x, or y equals x. Once you plug in for x, you get out for y. That's why we have that diagonal line right there. This is no big surprise. We've had lines pretty much our whole lives, right? So we, we've had these for a long time. The other ones we learned yesterday, oh, no, not yesterday, two days ago, was f of x equals x squared. The absolute value of x and the square root of x. If you were here a couple days ago, you know these, these make some weird looking graphs, some of these things. Do you remember the shape of f of x equals x squared? Do you remember what shape we got out of that? Yeah, show me with your hands how that looks. Is it the v one? No. Or the, the u one? U. Yeah, that's exactly right. Was it upward facing or downward facing? It depended on what sign was in front of it, right? But the negative made it go down. This one was upward facing. How about this absolute value of x? Absolute value of x, was that also a u? Oh, okay. So that was the one that was just like that, started at the origin, went up as a v. The way I remember that, absolute value equals a v, the v has two straight lines that come together, right? This has two straight lines. So take those lines and put them together, it makes a V. Does that make sense to you? That's how I remember it. Okay, very good. And this is the one we shifted vertically. We added one onto the end of it and it made it move up one. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's why we went over that, so this would be kind of easier. And then this last one, this wasn't the U. This wasn't the V. Awesome. Yeah, in fact, you know what, if you kind of, well, if you take my glasses off and you kind of look at it like that, this kind of looks like the shape of the graph a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, if you really, I mean, you have to imagine. You have to really, really imagine. Or you have to have glasses like mine, which are like, if I take it off, you're all just blurs. Just, just blur, every one of you. I see, I see grays and, oh, I see orange. I see that one real, real clear. But. <laughs> But what this does, it's half a parabola on its side. It's like if you took this one, made it go like this, and erased the bottom half. This kind of curves that way. Look at how the square root kind of goes that way. That's what that one looks like, or something similar to that. I need you to memorize these four shapes. I need you to memorize that if you just have an x or an x plus something or x minus something, you have a, a line. You've got a diagonal line. If you have an x squared, ladies and gentlemen, it is always going to look like that. It's going to be a parabola. If you have an absolute value, it is always going to be a v. And if you have a square root, it's always going to be this half a parabola on side, that funny looking shape that we have that shows like that forever. You with me on this? Now what we're going to do with this, the reason why I have to have you memorize it, we're going to be able to shift this around. And so by just understanding the basic shapes of these graphs, we're going to be able to draw lots of complex things just by doing a little shifting. We don't have to draw tables, we don't really have to do a whole lot of manipulation. We're just going to understand how to translate and shift and eventually make smaller, compress and stretch our graphs. The first one we got to talk about is what we did to this. When I did this on my graph yesterday, or two days ago, and I added one to the end of it, what this said is, okay, you're going to do your whole function, right? And then you're going to add one. What did this plus one do to that? It did, yeah. It said, whatever you have, I'm going to add one to it. It's going to raise it up one. If I did minus one, what would that have done? Great, yeah. The whole graph just would drop down one unit. With me? They have the same shape. This right here is our vertical shift. If 
if you add or subtract a number at the end of your function, what that's going to do is shift our graph vertically, either up or down. It will shift up or down. Um, by the way, you're going to notice that I've used f of x in every case up here. Do you guys see that? F of x. What this stands for in our in our examples for the next uh, for the next this whole section, f of x stands for one of these basic graph shapes. Because if I add one to the end of any of these, all it's going to do is shift it up one. If I subtract three, it's going to shift it down three. Does that make sense? So when I refer to f of x, I mean a basic graph shape. Okie dokie. That's twice today. Okie dokie. So if g of x, our new function, is made up of f of x, and by f of x, what do I mean by f of x? Graph. One of these. One of those right there. If it's made up of a basic graph shape plus k, some number, plus k, what's the plus k do here? What's going to shift up or down? Good. So is, in this case, it's plus k. Is it going to be up or down? Uh, up. Up how much? One. one. Oh, no, one. You don't even know. K, yeah. This is shift up K units. If I did the other way, F of X minus K, well that's going to be the shift down K units. Let's do a couple examples to really illustrate what happens with this. On each of these graphs for right now, I'm going to give you the original and I'm going to give you the, the manipulated, the shifted graph. So our first graph, we need to memorize this. f of x equals x squared. What shape is f of x equals x squared? It's on the board if you don't remember. It's, and yeah, it's the parabola. It's the u. It starts at 0, 0, and it just goes like this. It's that u. So this right here is f of x. Now, what I need you to do is be able to get to here without drawing another table. Notice we didn't even draw a table for that one. We're memorizing how these graphs look. That makes it easier. We don't have to draw a table. Notice how g of x is simply our basic graph shape minus 1. What is that minus 1 going to do for us in this case? Great. So all you got to do is this. Watch carefully, okay? When you're doing your problems, 